Today on Good Morning Maine, a new plan is unveiled to help protect Maine children from abuse and neglect. Plus, people speak out on a plan that would allow Mainers to have vehicles repaired by the mechanics of their choice. And how an end of Title 42 could impact the state of Maine. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. I'm Craig Colson. We'll have those stories coming up. We'll also have a live picture from Castine where Maine Maritime Academy students are getting ready to set sail on their annual training cruise. And it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day for it. It's lots of sun shine out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, should we check in with Let's check in with Devin first, first and yeah. then we'll then we'll head down to Castine. Yeah, here's Devin. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Winterport Sheds. Do you need an extra storage, a place to live, camp on your lot, buildings for your pets? Check them out at winterportsheds.com. All right, let's get into things this morning. Look at this. Frost advisories posted here. And they're up until 8 a.m. this morning because temperatures are getting cool enough to allow some frost to form on tender vegetation and everywhere else, for that matter, though, for these counties here. So hopefully remember to bring your flowers inside the last night because uh, they may not like this one bit. But otherwise, so we're looking pretty good to start things off this morning. We're looking for this a lot of sunshine and a few passing clouds throughout the daytime period for today will eventually become partly cloudy. As we do zoom things out, looking pretty decent out there for the time being. We have a front further out toward the ocean, but for us, remain quiet with high pressure right overhead. So in general, a partly cloudy sky expected again today will clear out pretty much later on tonight, but areas of dense fog, that's what this is right here. Here could possibly develop as we head towards early Thursday morning and a little bit of wind to watch out for again mainly out of the northwest around 10 maybe up to 20 miles per hour in a few spots we'll keep that wind again for the daytime tomorrow so again a little bit of wind to keep up with but most of it will take place during the daytime period so for today lower 70s not too bad party cloudy and breezy northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour the hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period a lot of sunshine a little bit more clouds in the afternoon highs close to 70 your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. All right, thank you very much, Devin. Well, this is the day that students at Maine Maritime Academy look forward to all year long. Some of them sign up for the school knowing this is part of the itinerary. This is the time of year when they're heading out on their annual training cruise. Let's take a picture from a live picture from down there. That's the state of Maine training vessel where all of these students will be spending the next, what, 74 days or so at sea. Um, they've been learning about certain things in the classroom. Now they get to go aboard and really put all those things they've learned to the test. Um, running this ship as they head around the world, basically, Emma. Yeah, and it seems like there will be about 211 students on board for this journey. Um, the itinerary includes places like Boston, Philly, Ireland, and Germany. Um, the president of the university is going, I believe, for about 70 days. Or maybe the whole, you said the whole trip is 70 days. Something like 74 days, yep. something like that. Yep. Yeah, around that. Um, and a fun fact we have for you, there's a professor on board that will be accompanying, accompanying students. And they were on the previous um, first trip trip that was taken many years back, in ago. A, back yeah. as a student and not too long it was no. just 1997 I believe oh, okay. yeah so fairly recent and these uh, these trips I guess are fairly recent in the history so I wonder if they can see our camera from here Wave. Know. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a bittersweet morning for all of them because yeah. the families and everybody else are down there on the docks kind of saying their goodbyes because they won't see these kids for um, until July I think they'll be in Ireland actually on July 3rd this year yeah. you can also keep track of the uh, the ship's progress if you want to you could visit the Maine Maritime Academy website and they have a thing where they're going to be logging um, their trip the whole way and, and showing pictures that kind of thing yeah uh, so it's kind of an exciting time for them Absolutely. they're expecting to take off I think around 8 45 9 o'clock this morning so uh, we'll try to check back in there as it's yeah as it's heading out of Castine Harbor and we certainly wish them the best absolutely they're yeah. so important to Maine's economy and culture. Yeah, what a great adventure. Right. All right, in today's news, the Department of Health and Human Services has proposed a $1 million plan of action to strengthen measures to prevent child abuse and neglect in Maine. This comes as the agency has been under increased scrutiny following multiple high-profile child deaths in 2021. A.J. Douglas was there as stakeholders unveiled that plan. The Maine Child Safety and Well-Being Plan is a first-of-its-kind measure developed on the basis of community input. The proposed plan would improve mandated reporting training, launch an education campaign for parents, and strengthen support towards local efforts. The Department of Health and Human Services Commissioner, Jean Lambrew, says the proposal is in a 1.0 version stage. 
this is not done. This is a framework. This is just the beginning. It is really a skeleton where we try to identify the major areas that we think from research, again, from Maine families, we think is the right approach. Following public scrutiny after the 2021 child deaths, stakeholders say this is a collaborative effort which requires individuals working on different levels to ensure the safety of children. We can't just focus on the state agency or the state department in terms of ensuring that kids are safe and families have the resources they need to be stable. This is really going to call on everyone in their various roles in communities, educators, parents, um, faith providers, everybody in the community has a role to play. The plan will also encourage parents to reach out for resources ranging from housing assistance, substance abuse disorder, and other early intervention services. Parenting is a tough job and it's a strength to ask for help. So how do we make sure parents are aware of the resources that are available to them, that we have really provided an opportunity to educate about those resources. Lambrew says the specifics on how the $1 million will be dispersed and how municipalities will obtain access to these funds is still being solidified as the plan is still in the preliminary stages. The proposed bill will be considered as part of the governor's proposed change package to the supplemental budget. In Augusta, A.J. Douglas for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Two women were seriously injured by campfires in recent days, including one incident that proved to be deadly. On Friday night, 46-year-old Lisa Liza Bragg was standing by when someone attempted to light a campfire in the town of China. The Albion woman received serious burns and was rushed to Maine Medical Center, but she passed away from her injuries. A woman was also seriously injured when she fell into a campfire in Auburn. Police say 40-year-old Jessica Durant was living in the woods when she was burned over half of her body. She was taken to the hospital where she remains in serious condition. Well, a crash in Ellsworth sent one man to the hospital Tuesday morning. According to Ellsworth police, it was around 7.30 in the morning. A motorcyclist was traveling northbound on Route 1A when a driver in a Honda Accord pulled out from North Street into the intersection. That's where he collided with the bike. The motorcyclist was taken to Northern Light Main Coast Hospital and treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the vehicle was treated at the scene. The crash remains under investigation by the police department. Come November, Maine voters will face the right to repair referendum question. Yesterday, folks on both sides of the issue broke or excuse me, spoke up at a hearing held by the Innovation, Development and Economic Advancement Committee. Our Matthew Jaronsik has the story. Proponents and those opposed to a proposed automotive right to repair bill made their voices heard at the State House Tuesday. The bill would require manufacturers of certain vehicles to standardize vehicle onboard diagnostic systems and make information accessible to owners and independent repair facilities allowing people to take their vehicles to the mechanics of their choice or do the work themselves. This is about the ability to choose where you get your car repaired. This is about a level playing field for independent repair shops in Maine and having the ability to control uh, the diagnostic repair information uh, from a car that you bought in a car repair that you will pay for. Alliance for Automotive Innovation Staff Affairs Vice President Wayne Weichel disagrees. Tell me um, why you're in opposition of the right to repair bill. Sure. Automakers already make available to consumers a range of repair options. All the information is available for these repairs to happen. There's, the only thing this is, is a monetized data grab by big box retailers. However, the main right to repairs website says wireless technologies prevent vehicles from getting repaired at independent shops. This is really the future of auto repair that's at stake. That will become less and less uh, capable uh, the more that the manufacturers transmit data through wireless technology, uh, which basically blocks us as independent repairers from accessing the information we need to diagnose vehicles. What this would do is uh, sacrifice all of the cybersecurity protections currently on a vehicle and instead make a state board responsible for providing those protections. There will be another public hearing on the bill ahead of the Innovation, Development, and Economic Advancement Committee's next workshop session. In Augusta, Matthew Jaronsik reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
And if the legislature fails to act on that measure, Maine voters may get a chance to vote on it when they head to the voting booth in November. Well, volunteers with the American Cancer Society's Cancer Action Network gathered at the State House yesterday, urging legislators to support LD-1577. That's an act to require health coverage for biomarker testing. The bill's language defines biomarker testing as the analysis of a patient's tissue, blood, or other biological specimen for the presence of any indicators of cancer. According to the Cancer Action Network, 60% of oncology treatments launched in the past five years required or recommended those biomarker testings. However, the Personalized Medicine Coalition reports 66% of oncology providers said insurance coverage was a significant or moderate barrier to this form of testing for patients. The proposed bill would require insurance providers to completely cover biomarker testing. Cancer survivors and their allies spoke about how this testing can lead to improved lives for cancer patients. <laughs> when my oncologist called me that day, I was leaving Hassan getting on the highway to come home and she called and she says, you don't have to do chemotherapy. I was like, oh my gosh, somebody is looking out for me. There's somebody, you know, a little guardian angel on my shoulder looking out for me. Well, the bill will be worked on in the next workshop session for the Joint Standing Committee on Health Coverage, Insurance and Financial Services. The Mills administration is watching closely as a major immigration policy is about to end. More immigrants are expected to come to the border, including many seeking asylum in the U.S. This comes as leaders in several main communities say they're already at capacity and are unable to help any more people coming in. Mel Meyer has more on what the end of Title 42 could mean for the state of Maine. They're suffering. No, they're hungry. No food. Uh... Title 42 is expiring, right as communities like Sanford is dealing with a sudden and unexpected influx of about 100 asylum seekers just in the last few days. The city manager told CBS 13 on Monday that he is concerned about Title 42 ending. Starting Friday, the U.S. will go back to its previous policy, Title 8. We have been preparing for this transition for more than a year and a half. The Biden administration says there will be new pathways for people to legally enter the U.S. while cracking down on illegal crossings. It carries stiff consequences for irregular migration, including at least a five-year ban on reentry and potential criminal prosecution for repeated attempts to cross unlawfully. It would make those people ineligible for asylum. National leaders are concerned that there is already a surge in people ready to try to get in. What it means next? None of us know. Martha Stein is the executive director for Hope Acts, an organization that helps asylum seekers and immigrants. She says it's unclear what to expect. We know that the city of Portland and the surrounding areas are really struggling to help so many people. Um, and this is playing out all over the country. In Portland, more than 1,000 asylum seekers arrived in just the first few months of the year. The city's communication director, Jessica Grandin, says in an email they are aware of Title 42 expiring. However, quote, there's not much it changes for us since we've already said on previous occasions that we are already at capacity, end quote. And they have been clear with those who work at the border about the current situation. Stein hopes everyone from the federal level down can get on the same page. My hope would be that we could stop weaponizing, demonizing, politicizing, and um, come to a solution that would really um, serve everyone. The Immigrant Legal Advocacy Project, which is based here in Maine, says that Title 42 stripped asylum seekers of their legal rights. A spokesperson adds that they believe that what comes next would stop people from getting asylum and leave them trapped in dangerous situations. All right, the time now is 8.14. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the Coast Guard is making a plan with other search and rescue agencies as they prepare for the busy summer boating season. But first, another check of that forecast. It's a great one, too. Today we can expect partly cloudy and breezy conditions with highs near 70 degrees. Dense fog overnight with lows dropping down to the mid-40s, followed by a beautiful sunny and breezy day tomorrow. The high tomorrow, 77 degrees. Here.
water. And with a new Toyota, you can do all your favorite beach activities, like spike ball, whitewater rafting, shrimp boils, wade fishing, or hanging with the locals. You can say that again. You could save up to $1,200 with affordable 3.99% financing on an all-wheel drive Camry. And every Camry comes with two years, no cost maintenance and more. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. NextGuard is the flea and tick protection that's number one with vets. Your vet trusts it for her patients and her own dog. Plus, its delicious beef flavor is number one with dogs. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Ask your vet about NextGuard. Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials, with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground round. Odland Road, Bangor. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. When the future of humanity is on the line, a courageous crew of celebrities will go where none have gone before. Sort of. They must survive with no Wi-Fi, no oat milk, and no personal assistance. Wait, what? That means you, buddy. Three, two, one. Mars on Mars. Launching Monday, June 5th on Fox. Waterville has a new city manager. Following a nationwide search, city leaders have given Brian Canrath a five-year contract to help run the city. Canrath currently serves as the Saco City Administrator and has also served as a town manager in Gouldsboro and in Northampton, New Hampshire. A former state lawmaker, Kenrath plans to focus on creating affordable housing, improving the local infrastructure, and revitalizing the downtown and neighborhoods in Waterville. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and experts are urging everyone to take stock of how they're really doing. According to Northern Light Acadia Hospital, self-care is a great way to address mental health concerns. Whether it's through exercise, eating and sleeping well, or taking part in relaxing activities, self-care looks different for everyone. However, experts say that one of the most important things you can do to improve your mental health is to talk about it. Keep talking about it. You normalize the fact that it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to have these feelings. It's okay to go talk to someone for help. Then I think that's that would achieve a lot more in terms of early identification and maybe it doesn't prevent someone from getting so sick. Experts say setting goals, practicing gratitude, and staying connected with friends and family can further help to strengthen your mental health. However, self-care is not a cure for mental issues, mental health issues, or mental illness. Experts say people should speak with their health care provider for specific treatment options. For more mental health tips, visit northernlighthealth.org slash behavioral health. Well, the U.S. Coast Guard hosted a conference yesterday in preparation for what they anticipate to be a very busy boating season. Devin Dagnalp has that story. The U.S. Coast Guard Northern New England sector hosted its annual spring search and rescue and recreational boating safety conference. Partnerships and, and teamwork are, are critical, like I said, to, to really all of our missions. So today it was just about ensuring that, that teamwork, that coordination, that unity of effort amongst our partners and just letting everybody know, um, you know, we've got each other's back. The U.S. Coast Guard Northern New England Sector's Recreational Boating Safety Coordinator, Ryan Crockney, says the meeting is the perfect opportunity for local and state agencies, harbor masters, and maritime partners to compare notes from last year's season and prepare for the one ahead. You know, everybody's on the same sheet of music and understanding of what, what needs to happen to uh, either A, rescue somebody that's, you know, having a really bad day out there in a distressed situation or you know, just trying to keep people safe and enjoying our wonderful waters here in Maine. According to Crockney, many of the accidents and situations handled by the Coast Guard could easily be avoided if boaters took proper precautions and educated themselves. There's a, many different types of boating education courses out there that, that you can take advantage of. If nothing else, just understanding basic you know, rules of the road and, and, and understanding that you know, there, there are rules out on the water. 
Grockney says some of the key safety measures boaters should follow on the water include never operating a boat under the influence, being aware of the weather, creating a float plan, and having at least one life jacket per person on board. We've got some of the best recreational boating waters in the country here in Maine. We're very fortunate. We want people to get out there and enjoy it, but we want them to do so safely. Educational materials and resources can be found on uscgboating.org. In Southwest Harbor, Devin Dagnall. ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Love those pictures from down on the coast of Maine. So beautiful down there, but it can be so dangerous too if you get out there and you don't know what you're doing or right. if you act recklessly. You know, the biggest thing people can do to help protect lives is wear, wear life vest. Just get in the habit of doing it or at least have the passengers on your boat do it if you don't want to do it yourself. Absolutely. That can help save some lives. Absolutely. Good things to think about as people begin to put their boats in the water yeah. again. All right, the time now is 821 after the break. Today, the FDA is expected to make a major decision regarding birth control pills. Plus, your full weather forecast is straight ahead. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Roto-Rooter has served the Greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Upgrade your outdoor living space with TurboTech decking and railing by Azac. The low maintenance decking with the look of natural wood. TimberTech is everything wood should be. TimberTech railings provide safety while adding a beautiful finish. Your Hammond sales rep will help you with your selections and design planning, and Hammond delivers from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. For the look of real wood that lasts a lifetime, choose TimberTech by Azac from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Mm -hmm. They've got the sharpest pencil in town. And they just sit around that showroom figuring deals and whittling that old pencil down. They know that if you buy once, you're going to be back. So instead of buying one, you're buying two, and that's a fact. They've got the sharpest pencil in town. So come on down, neighbor. The coffee pot's on. It's an epic new season with weekly themes and a special new twist. What? Somebody's messing with us. The Masked Singer, tonight on Fox. Pull up a seat. The real deal is back with a new season of the USFL. Reborn from the OGs. This is Dragons USDA primetime football. Just ask these guys. You better recognize the real. Except no substitutes. Major headline today involving women's health. A looming decision could change the way Americans get birth control. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details. Today, FDA advisors are expected to vote on whether to recommend what would be the country's first over-the-counter birth control pill. It is just super exciting that we've gotten here at this moment. It's really historic. Pressure to make birth control pills available over the counter, as they are in more than 100 countries, has been building since Roe v. Wade was overturned. Advocates want a specific birth control pill called O-Pill, available to people of any age without a prescription. So that they can access contraception more easily and, and be able to make those decisions that they want to make about their health and their families. At a hearing yesterday, the advisory panel questioned whether young women would use the pill correctly without the help of a doctor or adult. If the advisors recommend the pill, it would head to the FDA for approval. The agency typically follows the advisor's guidance. Meanwhile, another major headline involving women's health. A federal task force is drafting new recommendations for breast cancer screening, saying most women should begin mammograms at age 40, 10 years earlier than prior recommendations. That's because doctors are seeing higher rates of breast cancer among younger women. We've seen a 2% increase per year in breast cancer in women between 40 and 50. We don't really understand what's driving that increase. The guidelines will become official after a public comment period. All right, the time now is 825. Let's get a full look at that weather forecast with Devin.
All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Winter Porch Sheds. Do you need extra storage, a place to live, camp on your lot, buildings for your pets? Check them out at winterporchsheds.com. All right, let's get into things this morning. We have some alerts in effect, a frost advisory is in effect. We haven't seen these alerts for a while, though. They were issued yesterday because mainly for this morning, we're dealing with some frost in a few spots because of cool temperatures that have made it so far into the 30s for a few areas. But for now, this is the reason and why no clouds overhead and we're looking pretty clear to start things off we'll be seeing a lot of sunshine today but a few passing clouds as we head towards the afternoon period here's the big picture this is why we're nice right now though high pressure right overhead other spots across the country looking pretty busy with low pressure developing in many spots but for us high pressure is in control and that's going to keep us nice at least until friday before chances for showers and thunderstorms move back in no advisories along the coast right now uh, buoys reporting on two to four foot wave heights so again this is why no advisories are posted at this point. We're looking pretty good. Water temperature is still rather chilly. We have some warmer days on the way, but water temperatures, though, are definitely going to stay chilly in the upper 40s to lower 50s. So some caution to, to throw out there, though, for those that are thinking about going to the ocean. Still pretty cold out there. You know, temperatures, air temperatures, though, look to be in the upper 70s coming up later this week. So future cast for today, party cloudy sky will be the general idea. We'll hold on to the clouds for a little while later on tonight, but areas of dense fog possible as we head towards tomorrow morning that will burn off as the day progresses on a lot of sunshine for your thursday and any cloud development will quickly back off for a while though but again thursday night and parts of friday a little bit more cloud coverage on the way with our next system that will be a new approach already some gusty winds on the way as well again reaching up around 20 to 25 miles per hour and a few spots today kind of backing off a bit again later on tonight but a little bit more wind on the way for the daytime tomorrow getting close to 20 miles per hour in a few spots here are the temperatures our average high is 64 degrees we'll do lower 70s today upper 70s as we head towards your Thursday back in the mid 70s for your Friday cooling off a bit Saturday into Sunday back in the low 70s Monday and mid 60s again as we head towards the Tuesday forecast for today lower 70s party cloudy and breezy northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour by tonight mid 40s party cloudy some areas of dense fog possible northwest wind at around 20 miles per hour early and then backing off as we look ahead towards tomorrow upper 70s mostly sunny and breezy and that northwest wind picking up to about 20 miles per hour yet again we're Winter Port Sheds extended forecast. Here we go. More showers and thunderstorms possible on Friday with highs in the mid 70s. Lower 70s for your Saturday with a few rain showers possible. Party cloudy on Sunday. Highs in the low 60s. Healing Hands Massage in Hamden provides professional massage services tailored specifically for our clients. Healing Hands Massage offers a variety of different massage techniques and services. Healing Hands Massage also offers spa services such as facials, body scrubs, and paraffin wax for the hands and feet. Are you looking for a day of relaxation? Healing Hands Massage offers outstanding packages at reasonable rates. Whether you're looking for relief from chronic pain, stiffness, or just want to treat yourself to a day of relaxation, Healing Hands Massage is the place for you. These days you can buy a new mattress anywhere. However, getting the right mattress at the right price will keep you up at night. When you're ready for a new mattress, come to Dorsey's. We've delivered more mattresses to this area than any other retailer. With over 48 years of experience, the largest in-stock selection, plus our 30-night sleep guarantee, we've got the right mattress for you at a great price. Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A, Holden. Sleep well, my friends. Harvey High is now in session. Today's subjects, science. Name something that can make the earth move. Heavy rain. All on and rain. Health class. Something you drop in the toilet and still use it afterward. Toothbrush. Yeah. Nah. I'm not sticking that in my mouth. We're not doing teeth brushing today. Get schooled with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22.
Welcome back, everyone. The debt limit showdown continues this morning with the U.S. getting closer to what would be in an unprecedented default. President Biden met with top congressional leaders at the White House yesterday, but negotiations between the parties appear to remain at a standstill. ABC's Lindsay Watts is in Washington with what a default would mean for all of us. The U.S. economy and millions of jobs hang in the balance this morning with neither side willing to blink. I didn't find progress um, in this meeting. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy throwing cold water on hopes he and President Biden might reach a deal on the debt limit at a White House meeting Tuesday. The Treasury Department says a catastrophic default could be about three weeks away. Everyone in the meeting understood the risk of default. Our economy would fall into a significant recession. It would devastate retirement accounts, increase borrowing costs. Republicans in the House are using the debt ceiling as a leverage point. They say they'll only raise it if Biden agrees to deep spending cuts. Biden has said that's a non-starter, and he wants a clean bill that only raises the limit, like we've seen in the past, including three times under President Trump. Speaker McCarthy offered a very different way forward. He's proposed deep cuts that I believe are going to hurt American families. The stakes couldn't be higher. Social security payments will halt. Troops will go unpaid. The stock market will plunge. Interest rates will spike. And by one projection, six million people could lose their jobs. There are talks about workarounds if Congress can agree to raise the limit. One idea, the U.S. Treasury minting a $1 trillion coin. Biden saying yesterday that's not on the table, but he revealed he is looking at using the 14th Amendment to raise the limit without congressional approval, but he concedes it likely won't be effective and will spark lengthy litigation. That would obviously create a constitutional crisis. The president says he'll meet with top congressional leaders again on Friday. New reaction this morning from former President Trump after the historic verdict in writer E. Jean Carroll's civil rape case. Trump now vowing to appeal. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details. Former President Trump released a series of videos on social media last night reacting to a jury finding him liable for battery and defamation. The verdict is a disgrace a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time. After less than three hours of deliberations, a New York jury of six men and three women found Trump sexually abused E. Jean Carroll in a department store dressing room in 1996. How do you feel? The jury was not convinced that Trump raped Carroll, as she claimed. But the jury ordered Trump to pay Carroll $5 million, saying he defamed her by calling her story a hoax and a lie, while insisting Carroll was not his type. I don't even know who this woman is. I have no idea who she is, where she came from. At the trial, Carol's lawyers argued she was exactly Trump's type. They show the jury Trump's deposition when he was handed a photo of Carol and confused her for his ex-wife, Marla Maples. That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that, the oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Some Republicans appear unfazed by the latest legal blow to Trump. Senator Marco Rubio called the jury a joke. But Senator John Cornyn, a Trump critic, told reporters, I do not think he can win the presidency regardless of what you think about him as an individual. Former Vice President Mike Pence, who's considering whether to challenge Trump for the party's nomination in 2024, says Americans are not focused on his former boss. All of the controversies that are surrounding the president are just not what people talk to me about. Carol called the verdict a victory for her and for every woman who has suffered because she was not believed. All right, still to come here on the second half of our show, bracelets to honor Chris Greeley and fund the 25 Days of Kindness are back in stock at a local business. We'll have the details on that and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Sure, the driveway looks good now with the snow on it, but you know what will still be under there in the spring? The same cracks, crumbles, and potholes that were there before winter. Call Eaton Paving today. Let's make an appointment to fix those problems when the weather is ready. Eaton Paving and Excavation. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. 
so you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power, control your life. Visit Generac.com. Sure, the driveway looks good now with the snow on it, but you know what will still be under there in the spring? The same cracks, crumbles, and potholes that were there before winter. Call Eaton Paving today. Let's make an appointment to fix those problems when the weather is ready. Eaton Paving and Excavation. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Well, today is Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. I had to look down and make sure it's the right day there. I don't know where I am half the time. This is also, as we heard earlier today, Mental Health Awareness Week. Yeah. So mental health is still a taboo topic for many people. Um, and at many times, too. We can be okay with talking about it sometimes, and other times it's like, ah, I can't go there right yeah. now. Um, but at least one in four people are in need of mental health care. Um, this week is about starting conversations about mental health and the things in our daily lives that can cause us problems. Um, the important thing to know is that people are not alone and that help is available. And I know that some people are able to help sometimes, other times they're not able to help. The important thing is you can always ask and it's okay even if somebody can't help. Yeah. You know, just get the conversation started. You don't have to carry it all by yourself. You know, one of the one of the problems today is a lot of young people are dealing with this too. They're with depression and anxiety and right. things like that. There's help available out there. All you have to do is be willing to reach out and, and accept it. Right. Sometimes people are trying to help you. You have to be willing to accept the help Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. For yeah. everyone. And yeah. I know um, certain generations too, a lot of people didn't have these terms yeah. for a long time. So it's like, oh, well, why would I address that? I, we, we I've did, always dealt yeah. with it. We didn't even yeah. talk about them when I was younger either right. when I was a kid. But now right. it's front and center, which is probably where it should be. Yeah. All right, moving on now. On this day in history, way back in 1889, the the first coast-to-coast -coast railroad was completed when the Central Pacific and Union Pacific Railroad systems were joined by that golden spike in Utah. Hmm. They actually they drove that golden spike between the two tracks that and, is a and, fun and a big fact. ceremony. Now that spike is sitting in a museum somewhere. Yep. So yep. in 1933, the Nazis staged a, a massive public book burnings in Germany. Scary stuff. Yeah. Yep. And in 1994, Nelson Mandela became South Africa's first black president, ending more than 300 years of white rule. And in 1963, Decca Records signed the Rolling Stones to a contract after hearing advice from George Harrison of the Beatles, of course. And today's birthdays include U2 rocker Bono is 63, comedian Keenan Thompson is 45, sports anchor Chris Berman is 68, and this is also the birthday of late film star Fred Astaire, who was born back all the way in 1899. Seems like a long time ago. Yeah, but, all right. yeah it's crazy. Now check out the forecast. Looks like a beautiful day on the way today. Yeah, here's Devin Biggs. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Winterport Sheds. Do you need an extra storage, a place to live, camp on your lot, buildings for your pets? Check them out at winterportsheds.com. All right, let's get into things this morning. Look at this. Frost advisories posted here. And they're up until 8 a.m. this morning because temperatures are getting cool enough to allow some frost to form on tender vegetation and everywhere else, for that matter, though, for these counties here. So hopefully remember to bring your flowers inside the last night because uh, they may not like this one bit. But otherwise, so we're looking pretty good to start things off this morning. We're looking for this a lot of sunshine and a few passing clouds throughout the daytime period for today will eventually become partly cloudy. As we do zoom things out, looking pretty decent out there for the time being. We have a front further out toward the ocean, but for us, remain quiet with high pressure right overhead. So in general, a partly cloudy sky expected again today will clear out pretty much later on tonight, but areas of dense fog, that's what this is right 
right here could possibly develop as we head towards early Thursday morning. And a little bit of wind to watch out for again, mainly out of the northwest around 10, maybe up to 20 miles per hour in a few spots. We'll keep that wind again for the daytime tomorrow. So again, a little bit of wind to keep up with, but most of it will take place during the daytime period. So for today, lower 70s, not too bad, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, a lot of sunshine, a little bit more clouds in the afternoon, highs close to 70. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. Well, the town of Holden has received another shipment of Chief Chris Greeley commemorative wristbands. The bracelets can be purchased at the main military supply store on Route 1A in Holden. Chief Greeley died unexpectedly on March 9th. He was known for his community, community involvement, most notably his 25 Days of Kindness campaign, which he started as a way to give back to the community. Since Greeley's death, the Holden Police Department has stepped up to keep the 25 Days of Kindness initiative alive. The bands can be purchased for $5, with all of the proceeds going to support the fund in honor of Chief Greeley. Very nice. Yeah, I, that's a great way to yeah. be remembered. Yeah. Still to come here this morning, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with sports. We'll also have a very special interview about a, an event you may not want to miss this weekend. Don't go away. Or maybe you will. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family-owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and Vizi. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy-here-pay-here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. Bath remodeling was revolutionized in this garage in 1984 when three brothers created the iconic bath fitter tub over tub process. A breakthrough then, the industry standard now for beautiful baths without the mess, stress, or high cost. A better way from bath fitter means precise measurement, the highest quality acrylic, perfect preparation, and watertight installation backed by a lifetime warranty. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. At Hood, our love for New England inspired New England Creamery. We make it with premium Hood milk and cream, then we overload it with the good stuff. Like Green Mountain Mint Chip with a rich, fudgy swirl. Main Sweet Blueberry with real, delicious blueberries. And Cape Cod Fudge Shop, packed with fudgy truffles. Hood's New England Creamery, from Hood, for New England. Try all 13 flavors. On the next Last Man Standing. I want this house. Let, let's put in an offer. Said we would agree on this, right? And I just don't see myself living in the house. Ryan's ego can't handle Kristen in charge. I am an evolved 21st century male. I shouldn't think like this. You may hide it with your hemp sandals and your man purse, but you're a guy just like the rest of us. I pride myself on being better than that. Now it's just like I'm turning into you. You're not turning into anything. You've always been a guy. But stop calling me that. Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. Twins can be as opposite as wrong and right. Sheldon, do you really have to do that here? I drew a ladybug. Young Sheldon. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We are going to start with the Celtics. A very important Game 5 on Tuesday with the series tied at two games apiece. The Seas won't see home court again until Game 7 if needed. Jalen Brown masked and ready to go at the Garden, hoping to lead Boston to victory over Philadelphia. Picking it up in the second quarter, Sixers up 10. Joel Embiid double teamed, kicks it to Tobias Harris, back to Embiid, and he's going to bury the mid-range jumper. He was on fire all night long. In the third now, sees down 14, looking for a spark. Nice move to the basket here by Jason Tatum. He's going to miss it, but gets the put back to go, and it is a 12-point game. But the Celtics really just couldn't figure it out tonight. Tatum is going to get it poked loose right here, and that's going to result in an easy two for the Sixers to put them up 16 in the third quarter, up 17 now, and Tyrese Maxey is going to get a wide open paint, gets to the hole, and gets it to go. 19 was their biggest lead at that point, and it didn't get any better. Boston Falls, 115 to 103. Let's put that one past us. We'll head to the Diamond now. Maine baseball is nearing the end of their regular season with just two America East series left on the calendar before playoffs. 
This past weekend, the Black Bears dropping their first America East series of the year, losing two of three to UMBC. They're in second place. Friday and Saturday, both hard fought nine to eight losses to the Retrievers. And Sunday's nine to nothing win gave them an advantage in the season series after sweeping their Retrievers earlier in the year. And talking to the team on Tuesday, head coach Nick Durba says taking those losses doesn't really sound any alarms. And they're looking at it as a chance to take their kicks before it matters most. Uh, I think actually it gives some resiliency to us. Uh, you know, coming back from some losses, some disappointments, that was really important for us to learn this over this weekend. So, uh, you know, while you never want to lose, you never want to lose those series, uh, this is, this is kind of like how we start to learn and continue to learn and progress as a team. And maybe we'll hit our stride, uh, you know, our second streak, you know, coming up here this weekend. Now, the bright spot of the weekend was on the mound on Sunday as freshman Gianni Gambardella was dealing in seven shutout innings. He would get the win and earn himself an America East Rookie of the Week nod, his second of the season. Now, Gambardella missed a few weeks of the season early on with an elbow injury in his throwing arm, but was able to battle back and become one of the rotation's more consistent pieces. The main thing I was just thinking about was just keeping it in the zone, throwing strikes, and making them swing at the ball, be competitive in the zone. I mean... Before every game, we all have pitcher meetings, and that's what Coach Heath always talks to us, just be in the zone, be competitive with your pitches, and the guys behind us, hopefully get, they make the plays, and they've been doing really good behind me. You know, G's, G's went out and threw strikes, I mean, he's got good stuff, commands the ball well, you know, and half the battle is really being able to pound the zone with some real command and not just, you know, splitting plate or missing, missing the strike zone. They're in action at Merrimack on Wednesday. Let's stay with some baseball now. Husson Baseball with a chance to clinch the NAC title on their home turf, but they have to beat SUNY Cobbleskill twice to do it. Fighting Tigers looking to close this one out in one game. Husson trying to win two in a row. Picking it up in the first inning. Eagles with runners on the corners. Dave York grounds this ball to the pitcher who spins and fires to second. But that gets away. That brings in Ethan Stoddard. Eagles go up 4 nothing. Next batter, Colin Marshall, lines this one into right field. Hunter Curtis is going to score. And York hustles all the way around from first on the misplay. Marshall goes to third. 6 to nothing now. Next batter, Keegan Sear, lifts one deep into right field. And that is plenty deep to bring home Marshall. The Eagles would post a seven spot in the top of the first. The pitching and defense says thank you very much. That is plenty of insurance for them as they take game one by a score of 16 to 6. So here we go. Eagles and fighting Tigers in a winner take all game two. First inning, Tigers with men on the corners, one out. Look at this heads up play from Ty Knowlton, the catcher. Perfect throw to third. Tanner Evans slaps the tag down to cut the threat. Later on, Connor Abood on the hill. Tigers have him loaded. That doesn't phase him one bit. Sits him down on strikes, and he is fired up about it. Eagles down one now. Knowlton at the dish. He is going to crush this ball dead center. That's the deepest part of the ballpark right there, and it's over everything. This game is tied, and the Eagles are pumped up. To the bottom of the eighth we go. Same score, bases loaded for Akira Warren. He singles up the middle. That's going to bring home Evans and Jackson Curtis, and the Eagles are able to slam the door in the top of the ninth as well. They win their fourth straight NAC title. Final score is 4-1. to one. It just, I think, shows you know what we've done all year. We've just kept playing baseball. Kids have believed in themselves. Coaches have believed in them, and uh, you know, just so proud of them. Just so proud of their efforts today. Um, and that's a really good baseball team that we beat today. And uh, just really, really proud of them and, and ready for that next step. I think it just kind of shows like what our team was this year. We just stuck together, really pretty group. I mean, we have even in the dugout, like we know everyone has a role, and just everyone played that role really well the whole weekend, and it just led us to this. And big stuff from them. Dropping a game yesterday, then winning three straight. Congratulations to the Eagles. Let's switch gears slightly, and we will head over to softball. Hassan on the road looking to clinch their fourth straight NAC, fifth straight NAC title. They're up against Casanova, and we're going to pick this up. Bottom seven, no score still, one out. Tegan Blackie lines this one into right field. The Eagles are in business with a base runner on and one out. Next batter is Katie Raymond, and the lefty is going to get a hold of this pitch and rope it past the second baseman. And now the Eagles have first and second with one out, so they go to the small ball here, and it gets the job done. Olivia McCarty with a beautiful sacrifice bunt that makes it second and third with two down, and Bulla McCabe at the plate. And she takes care of business. Lining a single into center field. Blackie trots home, hops on home plate. The Eagles are NAC champs for the fifth season in a row. One to nothing is the final. A big congratulations to them. Good luck in the NCAA tournament to both teams. That's all the time we have for sports, though. We'll be right back after the break. There are many paths toward every goal. 
your financial journey is too important to travel alone. Maine Savings is a different type of financial institution. We're here to help you find a path forward that fits you, your family, your business. Our mission is to always go beyond so you can accomplish more. Go beyond what's expected. Go beyond banking. Hood is the cottage cheese cottage cheese lovers love. Start with our award-winning country style. It's delicious on its own or like this. That. Even. Sure. Plus, it's got more protein than hummus and less sugar than yogurt. Then there's Hood's flavors. We expertly blend in real fruit or savory herbs for an unbeatable taste combination you can't recreate at home. Mmm, now that's cottage cheese. Hood cottage cheese. Always good, always hood. No matter what type of dog you have or cat you have, Frontline Plus lets you take them everywhere, no matter how you define it. Frontline, the number one name in flea and tick protection. When Healing Hands Massage wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Healing Hands Massage provides massage therapy tailored to each of its clients. Whether you have chronic pain or just want a little relaxation, Healing Hands Massage, Main Road North in Hamden. Plant scientist. Buttness. Yeah! yeah! You got it! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! With celebrities. You got sassy. Come to play. <laughs> just because you got your guns out. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> It's all fun and games. First name, Urkel. A oh, Steve. <laughs> 25 words or less. Beauty, Mark. Mole. Yes! That's the money, y'all! Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. We're here with Melissa Gallagher. She's from Fields Pond Audubon Center, and she's here to talk about World Bird Migration Day. Yes, that's correct. Cool. It, is, it is quite a mouthful. So, yeah. so yeah, World Bird Migration Day is a day that we set aside each year to kind of uh, talk about the conservation of migratory birds and their habitats. And um, we celebrate this at Fields Pond on Saturday. Cool. So um, one of the... Uh, cool things about migratory birds this time of year is that there's so many of them. Yeah. I was sitting outside at the pavilion on Fields Pond um, eating my lunch yesterday and I think I Great counted, yes, <laughs> I counted 17 birds, wow. different species of birds that were, you know, just coming to the feeders and just, you know, it's just an amazing time to be outside looking at birds. You so, know, I've seen the same thing around my house. I yeah. seem to notice more birds yes. this year for some reason. They yes. were even, when I came into work at like 3.30 in the morning yesterday, they were singing already. Oh, it was that's still wonderful. Black, you know. It's 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. What, like, what, what, what are you doing up? But, yeah. <laughs> well, so they could be making that migratory journey, right. which is really important because we do have a lot of species that return to Maine mm -hmm. and over summer with us, but then some still continue on to northern, you know, sure. parts of Maine and on to Canada. So we just really need to make sure that what we're doing here in Maine is helping them, you know, make that journey and mitigate any stresses that come into that very difficult path that they take every year. How can we help? Well, well, I'm glad you asked. So, <laughs> um, so one of the ways we can do that is by keeping our house cats inside. Mm -hmm because many birds suffer to uh, die or are killed by or injured by house cats every year. Yeah. So that's one way. Mm -hmm. And another way is to help make your windows a little bit more bird friendly by putting up some, um, I think we have some here, some window um, collision tape. Mm -hmm. And this is really a, a nice way to do it because the newest kind is not the decals. These are when you're inside, you look out, you really see nothing. Mm -hmm. right. But when you uh, look from the outside of your home, you see what the bird sees and it's much more, uh, less reflective. Okay. So that gives you that opportunity to prevent them hitting the windows because a yeah. lot of birds die that way too. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, that being said, we have so many other things that you can do like this Saturday. Um, we have a bird walk that starts at 8 a.m. Cool. Um, and that would be a wonderful way to get started. Um, is it all ages? It is, cool. it is, yeah. And then um, continuing with that, we have uh, Wendell Gilly coming. They're doing a bird carving to kind of you know, demonstrate all the fun things you can do as an artist. Yeah. And then um, there's a binocular sale and we have a discussion on choosing those, the right binoculars for you. Um, so everybody needs to kind of try them on, look at, you know, out through them and, and make sure that these are comfortable so that they can use them. Yeah. 
And then um, finally, we have a um, Nick Lunn, who's coming from Maine Audubon um, in our Gilsland Farm um, location, and he is going to be talking about how to make your house bird friendly. Cool. So Nick has a book, so he'll be there is to. It yes, it is, and uh, <clears throat> and he'll be there to. If you like, you can purchase that at our nature center, um, and our nature store has 20% um, off this this Saturday. That's big. Yes. Yep. And binoculars are included, but they are 10% off. So good we job. have a lot of good things. It's a great time of year to get outside and be, um, you know, getting involved with your local chapter. Um, the Penobscot Valley chapter is the chapter that's most local here. Yep. And they have a number of bird walks. Um, we'll have this available at the center. Okay. But basically, um, one or two a week. You could go on bird walks around the Bangor area. Okay. And one of the locations is Fields Pond. Fantastic. But um, it's a great time to get out and enjoy the beautiful weather and the spring um, budding of the leaves. Good and for all your that mental health on yes, top of exactly. everything, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yes. absolutely. And just as a thank you and to encourage you to get out and be birders, we brought you some hats oh, for yes, you thank too. You. Yes, you can fight oh, over the colors oh, or who you would like. What kind of bird is this? This is a bluebird, okay. and that's a goldfinch. Very neat. Cool. Thank yeah. you. You're thank welcome. You. Yeah. I love hats. And uh, your website, just to tease that before we <laughs> go. Oh, sure, absolutely. So um, it's Maine Audubon. Um, dot org, and uh, you can specifically look for Fields Pond under the headings there on awesome. the different sanctuaries. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on again. Well, it's thank always a you. Joy to have you on. Yeah. Of course. We'll throw it over to Devin Biggs for our full weather forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Winter Porch Sheds. Do you need extra storage, a place to live, camp on your lot, buildings for your pets? Check them out at winterporchsheds.com. All right, let's get into things this morning. We have some alerts in effect, a frost advisory is in effect. We haven't seen these alerts for a while, though. They were issued yesterday because mainly for this morning, we're dealing with some frost in a few spots because of cool temperatures that have made it so far into the 30s for a few areas. But for now, this is the reason and why no clouds overhead and we're looking pretty clear to start things off we'll be seeing a lot of sunshine today but a few passing clouds as we head towards the afternoon period here's the big picture this is why we're nice right now though high pressure right overhead other spots across the country looking pretty busy with low pressure developing in many spots but for us high pressure is in control and that's going to keep us nice at least until friday before chances for showers and thunderstorms move back in no advisories along the coast right now uh, buoys reporting on two to four foot wave heights so again this is why no advisories are posted at this point. We're looking pretty good. Water temperature is still rather chilly. We have some warmer days on the way, but water temperatures, though, are definitely going to stay chilly in the upper 40s to lower 50s. So some caution to, to throw out there, though, for those that are thinking about going to the ocean. Still pretty cold out there. You know, temperatures, air temperatures, though, look to be in the upper 70s coming up later this week. So future cast for today, party cloudy sky will be the general idea. We'll hold on to the clouds for a little while later on tonight, but areas of dense fog possible as we head towards tomorrow morning that will burn off as the day progresses on. A lot of sunshine for your Thursday, and any cloud development will quickly back off for a while, though. But again, Thursday night and parts of Friday, a little bit more cloud coverage on the way with our next system that will begin to approach. Already some gusty winds on the way as well, again, reaching up around 20 to 25 miles per hour in a few spots today, kind of backing off a bit again later on tonight, but a little bit more wind on the way for the daytime tomorrow, getting close to 20 miles per hour in a few spots. Here are the temperatures. Our average high is 64 degrees. We'll do lower 70s today. Upper 70s as we head towards your Thursday, back in the mid 70s for your Friday, cooling off a bit Saturday into Sunday, back in the low 70s Monday, and mid 60s again as we head towards the Tuesday. Forecast for today lower 70s, party cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. By tonight, mid 40s, party cloudy, some areas of dense fog possible. Northwest wind at around 20 miles per hour early and then backing off. As we look ahead towards tomorrow, upper 70s, mostly sunny and breezy. And that northwest wind picking up to about 20 miles per hour yet again. Winter Port Sheds extended forecast. Here we go. More showers and thunderstorms possible on Friday with highs in the mid 70s. Lower 70s for your Saturday with a few rain showers possible. Party cloudy on Sunday. Highs in the low 60s.